Hello, everyone. Um, I will share the screen now. Um, so my name is Lu Tong Hong. I'm from MIT. And today, the project I'll be presenting is the pop operator on M Tamari lattices, a project I did this summer at the University of Minnesota Duluth REU. Um, so maybe let's start with the definition. Uh, what is a pop, op um, pop operator? A pop operator is an operator on a lattice that sends a lattice element X to the meet of all the elements Y that are covered by X and including X itself. So taking all these elements meet greatest lower bound. Um, Y reunion by X is just in case that X is a minimal element zero hat and it does not have any um, descendant. Um, so we really notice that this pop operator will send a lot of elements to whatever that's smaller than them. And then it will eventually stabilize at the minimal element. And then so um, we say a lattice element is T-pop sortable if after um, T-pops, it will get to the minimal element, including if it takes less than T times, that is also T-pop sortable. Um, and then so we, why do, why do we study this operator? Um, define, define this operator um, motivated by a series of um, previous study. So um, News had this stack sorting algorithm um, in 1973, um, and West in his 1990 PhD thesis groundbreaking work um, defined a deterministic variant of the uh, stack sorting algorithm that is a stack sorting map. And then there has been a lot of study of variants of this West stack sorting map, including um, pop stack sorting map and reverse stack sorting map. And the pop operator, when we apply this to the lattice of SN under the weak order, also known as Burhat order of a Coxter group, um, this effect will coincide with the in fact, effect of the pop stack sorting map. So um, this pop operator on lattice, the definition actually makes sense um, because of this natural um, coincidence on a very commonly studied lattice. And so we want to apply it to a lattice and um, our discussion is on generalized Tamari lattices. To tell you a lattice, um, I need to tell you what are the elements of it and also what is the partial order. So the elements are just all the paths that are weakly above one chosen path um, that, are, um, that start and end with the same points. So like choose a path, um, going north or east at each step only, and then any path that's weakly above it is in this tem nu. So what is the partial order? It's a little bit tricky to define. Um, basically, we require um, a very special subpath D, this purple segment of an element, a lattice path nu, and then we shift this path to the left by one unit. And then we obtain a different path that is still weakly above this bounding path. So it is still in this 10 mu. And then in this case, we say that um, this path, um, before the path was shifted to the left, um, this thing is covered by um, the thing we obtain after the shift. And we, of course, require a lot of properties on this D. For example, uh, it must be preceded by a step to the east, and the first step must be to the north. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to shift it to the left even. And second, um, the start and end points of this subpath need to satisfy some certain condition, such that they must have the same horizontal distance to the bounding path nu. Horizontal distance is the maximum number of steps to the east you can take. Um, so that you do not cross this path, you only touch it. So for example, here P and P prime both have horizontal distance one. And we also require that there is no point between them that has the same horizontal distance as them. Um, so here, this point and this point, none of their horizontal distance is one. So th therefore this purple path is our desired subpath D. And in other words, if we denote whatever that's um, before um, the E step to be X, and then whatever that's after um, the subpath to be Y, then we say the, the element before the shift, the element that's smaller is X, E, D, Y. And then this element after the shift that's um, greater than it, it's X, D, E, Y. So this is another um, possible phrasing of the partial order. 
And with a partial order, this forms a lattice. And when we choose some special lattice paths new, um, we get some even more specialized lattice. So here, if we choose new to be um, the path that repeat n times and it goes north, east, 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 north, east, 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 repeat n times, um, then we say the lattice we study is called the nth m tamari lattice. And even more specifically, if m equals one, um, which means that our bounding path is north, east, north, east, repeat n times, um, this is the tamari lattice, um, 10 n, and the elements are called dig paths. So if you are familiar with dig words um, or you're familiar with, um, you know, that its size is a Kaplan number, this is really our familiar combinatorial objects. So, um, and the m tamari lattice will be the main object of our study today. So you might ask, why do we care about them? Um, well, because it has a lot of rich connections to cluster algebra um, and Hopf algebra. It is a lot of the introduction was done by um, people who study both algebra and combinatorics. And for example, um, the Hazel diagram of 10N is isomorphic to the one skeleton of an associate hydrogen. And also um, 10 and M, this more general um, 10 uh, M tamari lattices, it appears in, it was actually introduced in the combinatorial study of higher diagonal co-invariant spaces. Um, this last bullet point I'm not really knowledgeable in, but if you're interested, you can um, search up references that do a good job in the expository part. And so, so this, this kind of um, tamari lattices are of people's interest, and then we want to know what's Pop's effect on it. But we are not able, however, to give a very direct description of the image under Pop if we only look at the lattice paths themselves. Therefore, we want to connect them to a kind of different objects that we are able to describe. And so here we introduce the new bracket vectors. Um, this new bracket vectors are defined um, based on two things. First, we still need to choose a lattice path new. And then we read um, its height at all the possible indices. So this is a height vector of new, and this is fixed. So um, this is the first ingredient to define the new bracket vector. The second ingredient are the three conditions. Namely, we require them to take specific values at some very specific indices. Um, the second is that um, all the entries should be lower bounded by this fixed vector. Um, so this should be as the path is weakly above um, the bounding path. And this new bracket vector should also be uh, bounded by this already fixed new bracket vector, the height vector. Um, the third condition is less straightforward than the previous two. Uh, what it tells us is that an equivalent condition. Let's just ignore what is asked here. Um, but an equivalent, completely equivalent um, condition would be that there is no one-to-one -one pattern in this new bracket vector. So we cannot find indices i smaller than j smaller than k such that b i is b k, but they are both smaller, strictly smaller than b j. This is not possible. So one-to-one um, -one pattern avoiding. And this is basically what condition three is telling us. And also an important or convenient thing to keep in mind is that between any two fixed positions fk, um, fk are the largest indices such that bfk nu is k, like the maximum index you can get to stay on height level k. Um, between any two fixed positions, um, the sequence is weakly um, decreasing. Um, so yeah. This is just a very quick point to keep in mind of. And we say that this it's the partial order between new bracket vectors are much easier to describe. It's just taking the term wise, um, which, which one is smaller. We, we ensure that for all the entries, um, one must be smaller or equal than the other to have this vector to be defined as smaller than, or equal than the other in this lattice. And this uh, new bracket vector lattices is denoted as WAC new. And here is a map. Um, I give you an element in this 10 new a lattice path. Um, I can have a new bracket vector affiliated, associated with it. Um, this is a process. It's fairly simple and I won't read it off, but feel free to take a look at this. And then there is a serum 
by Chabalos, Pedro, and Samianto um, very recently. Um, their theorem is that this map is an isomorphism between the two lattices um, I just described, the Tamari, uh, generalized Tamari lattice, Tam nu, and this new bracket vector lattice, um, partial order defined by um, termwise smaller, like termwise minimum. And we also, in addition to this nice isomorphism, know how to characterize the meat of two elements. Um, this line tells us a very easy way to determine the affiliated um, vector of the meat of two elements. It is just taking the term-wise minimum of the two affiliate vector, uh, affiliated vectors of those two lattice paths. So this is very elegant. And then with this theorem, um, the font um, characterized the effect of pop on this new bracket vectors entirely. So basically, if um, it is the same as the subsequent entry, then we don't change it. We, after the pop, it is still the same. So this, this effect of pop is really determined um, term-wise, and it is only about um, entries that is um, added or after it. So if it is larger, as we said, it cannot be smaller because it is, you know, weakly decreasing. Um, if it is larger than this, then um, we define the, the after the pop, this entry to be the largest possible element X satisfying this condition. Um, again, this is for rigorous saying. A more convenient way to phrase it is that it must decrease because here, like this upper bound of this segment is strictly smaller than um, the original entry, um, but it decreases as little as possible. This is why we say it's the largest possible X. Um, provided um, really what this line is saying is to guarantee that the image under pop as a whole is still a valid new bracket vector. So this line like entirely, it exactly what the third condition in the definition of new bracket vector is saying. Um, that is the condition that to avoid one to one pattern. Um, so after Defont um, characterized the effect of pop, he proved a bunch of very nice results. Um, people concern the number of T-pop sortable elements in the West deck sorting map. So here we also concern it under the pop um, operator. Um, he had this um, general result for uh, a, an element in this um, tam nu, um, like how, how many one pop sortable um, elements are there. And as a corollary, he is able to find that the number of one pop sortable elements in 10 and M, the M's, the nth M um, Tamari lattice is two to the N minus one. It's independent um, with M and it's very neat. And so he also enumerated the T equals two case. There are two different cases. First case is M equals one. We are considering the lattice of thick paths. Then this number to, of two pop sortable elements is the Pell number PN. If you remember the Pell sequence, the recurrence is PN equals two times PN minus one plus PN minus two. And when M is at least two, um, the recurrence is a bit different. As you can see, here is a three, um, it's no longer um, two. And from this exact formula of generating function, one can just read up what is the number of two pop sortable um, and ballot paths. It's really nice. Um, but you may say that this is for small t, t equals one and two. One can be curious, what can we say of general t? Defont made this conjecture um, based on the t equals one and two cases that um, he conjectured that this following generating function um, sum over HTN and the N is rational. Uh, HTMN is the number of T-pop sortable um, elements in this TEM and M. And um, well, T equals one and two suggests that this conjecture should be true. Um, we are able to verify this conjecture for all M um, at least T. And the uh, computer data um, suggest that when M is smaller than T, the conjecture may not even be true. Like we are not really optimistic about that part of the veracity of the conjecture. So I'd say that um, when M, at least T, we are able to prove it and that's probably the best we can do at this point. Um, and also after all, when M is smaller than T, there are just, you know, finite, like bounded by T number of scenarios that are considered as more messy. Um, compared to this M at least T form. That's like, we're talking about a larger portion of cases here. 
And so this is our first result to verify this conjecture by the font very recently. Our second result um, is able to give the exact um, generating function for tem n, um, the m equals one case, the lattice of thick paths. Um, from this exact generating function, we are able to read off HTN. And if you look at the denominator here, a lot of the recurrence coefficients, um, CJs, are the Catalan numbers. And that actually um, is not a surprise, given that um, the size of this tan n is CN, uh, the n's Catalan number. So, um, but this is pretty and um, kind of no one expected that the exact generating function can be uh, just written down um, in a very nice and elegant way. And I want to point out that um, the coefficients starting, the starting terms of the recurrence coefficients um, does not depend on t. So this, this sequence actually, if you take the sequence of the recurrence coefficients, that stabilizes and that's pretty nice. Um, our third result enumerated the number of three pop sortable elements. Um, this is the exact generating function we are able to find. And we kind of conjecture that um, if you still recall, um, when we are talking about two here, there is a three and here's a five. Um, it is interesting to see whether it will always be this two n minus one in this um, coefficient of the z to the one term in the denominator. Yeah, this is something that um, one might look into. Um, it's a very nice observation. And um, so this concludes the part of our results on Tamari lattices. However, there are a lot of possible future work to be done. Um, this slide showcases the history um, of study on all the on pop operator on coxter group lattices under Braha order. So we know that SN symmetry group is a coaster group of type A. And Powell and Smith enumerated the number of two pop stack sortable elements. Chris and Guomanson um, proved that the generating function is rational, um, just like the conjecture um, we proved of the fonts. So this kind of rational generating function conjecture um, really exists a lot in the field. And the fund in 2021 um, ob obtained results on type B um, cocktail groups and also um, A tilde permutations. This is um, as opposed to type A, type B, and type D. This A tilde is infinite permutations. Um, he proved that the generating function is rational along with other results. And our study, um, the Tamari lattice, when m equals one case, is also along the line of coastal group lattices because it is isomorphic to the lattice of three one to avoiding permutations, um, permutations semi like elements in Sn under recorder, this Sn lattice, um, but three to one pattern avoiding, three one two sorry, and. Yeah, so we might want to look into other related Coxa group flavored lattices. And one possible uh, very natural uh, candidate would be the bipartite Cambrian lattices on SN. Cambrian lattices was defined by Nathan Reddings in 2004, I believe. And feel free to look up um, his original paper for full definition because it can get pretty messy. Um, um, the current ongoing pro progress is that I successfully enumerated the one, two, three um, pop sortable elements and also the n minus one pop sortable elements. Note that by a theorem of Defont or by corollary of several of his results, um, n minus one is the maximal number of pop it actually takes. So like, yeah, like after n minus one pops, um, like everything's fine. Um, and then so, there is a conjecture I raised um, about this bipartite Cambrian lattice for SM, whether the generating function is rational. Put it as a conjecture because the computer data kind of suggests that it is true. There is a more open unexplored question that since type A, B, type A tilde has been down, what about type D? What about the uh, type D coastal group? That is the dihedral group DN. Um, what can we say about that? Whether to enumerate small t uh, t pop sortable elements or to prove a general rational generating function kind of result. Um, we don't really know about this yet. And so I will just conclude with this open question. And if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me. And um, thank you for your time, attention, and this thank you for all the people um, and 
organizations listed on this slide um, for support of my research. Thank you so much.